Hi, my name is Nikolai aka 56 Miner, and today we're unboxing our June Premium Box. This month's box is all about the Hero Arts Reactive Inks. We'll go over the materials, talk a little bit about how to use them, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I picked up while working with everything. Let's get into it! For our service this month, we have the Pesha White Printing and Drawing Paper. This medium weight paper comes in a 10 sheet pack, and it's got a very slight tooth to it. And because it's made of cotton, it'll be super absorbent. The next four items in our box are going to be a custom curated set of the Hero Arts Reactive Inks. And for our colors, we have Fruit Punch, Fog, Blue Raspberry, and Lemon Drop. And our brush this month is going to be a round brush from the King Art 9000 Gold series. Now, right out of the bottle, our reactive inks are going to offer us some really opaque color and some really beautiful shades. By dipping our brush in a little bit of water, we can activate that pigment and create some very subtle washes. And thanks to the superior quality of our round brush, we can go between using the tip for those neat edges or using the brush on its side to fill in larger areas. What's really nice about these inks is you can always go back and rework them. So we can always fan it out to a lighter color or layer more of that ink on top for more opaque coverage. And because they're so water soluble, we can really dilute them down to create a wide range of really subtle values, like we talked about last month in our liquid graphite box. Now while our inks offer us some really beautiful colors straight out of the bottle, we can mix them in order to create a variety of secondary hues. We can get some really beautiful greens and teals, some very lovely purples and magentas, and even some more peachy tones. And if we mix in our fog, we can desaturate our colors, allowing us to create some more neutral tones. Now to explore more of the more reactive characteristics of our ink, I'm going to start by using some clean water to pre-stretch our paper. So I'm just going to go in with my brush and wet both sides. With our surface still wet, we can start to dab in some of that reactive ink. Now what I'm doing here is laying down a good base layer so we're going to go in and reactivate that ink once it's dry. I really love the fog color in this set as it's a good kind of neutrally blue gray and you can create some really fun effects. Feel free to explore any of your favorite colors. I'm more partial to the blue purple spectrum so I'm just kind of exploring some different hues while laying down that base layer. And you can always go in and layer more reactive inks on top of your base layer. This kind of creates a marbling effect. And our reactive inks are going to dry to a slightly lighter color, so don't worry about going too dark. Now once our paper is fully dry, we can really start to dive into those reactive techniques. Taking our brush after it's been dipped in a bit of water, we can tap on the furlough, which will give us some medium sized drops. Or we can flick the top of our brush, which will give us more of a directional splash. And of course, we can use our brush as we typically would, just using the water. Now the more water we allow to sit on that surface, the more those pigments are going to react and lift. So our reactive ink is going to activate with water. So because I'm going in with only a slightly wet brush, we'll get some reaction, but not too much. If we go in with larger dots of water, that's really what's going to lift that pigment and allow us to explore those reactive techniques. While our paper dries, let's grab the next item in this month's box, the Sketchbox Signature White Gel Pen. Now, a gel pen is a great tool for any artist, and we're really proud of the one that we've made you. With our paper fully dry, we can see the fun texture effects that the reactive ink gave us, and we can shift this into more of a galaxy theme. So here, I'm going to focus on Orion, starting with the stars that make up that constellation, and then connecting them with a line. Now we can really supercharge those whites by allowing them to dry just a little bit before going back in and layering them again. Try creating your own galaxy piece featuring your favorite constellation this month. And as a final step on this little galaxy piece of ours, I'll go in and add a few shine marks to help balance out the composition. Let's grab the final item in this month's box, the 0.5mm Copic Multi Liner in pink. Now, fine liners are great for outlines and line work because they offer us a consistent mark regardless of how we hold the pen. 
And while pens aren't always seen as the most value-based medium because we typically think of outlines for them, we can use them as a value-based medium by condensing the spacing between our lines. It kind of creates an illusion that we have value and form. They're great for repetitive elements, cross-hatching, and we can add a little bit more life and organic nature to our pen by bending our lines a bit. And if you're the patient type, they're also great for pointillism, which is when we build value by making a series of small dots and reducing the space between those dots to imply value. While pointillism does take a bit more time than other drawing methods, you can get some fun effects if you stick with it. Now that we have a good understanding of our materials, let's do something a bit more complex. For this, I'm going to take our pencil from our April Pantone box and use it to sketch out my initial concept. So this month, I'm going to take some inspiration from our prompt, Sweet Treat, and do an illustration of some strawberries. And while I'm sketching, I'm going to try and reduce everything down to its basic shapes, just like we talked about in April. Make sure not to rush when you're working on your initial sketch, as this is really where you're doing a lot of the troubleshooting with whatever you're depicting. Once I'm happy with my sketch, I'll go in with a Copic Multiliner and start to work on the line art. And for this, I'm going to use a combination of solid and broken lines, that way it doesn't flatten out my drawing. And then for a texture detail, I'll go in and start to draw in a few seeds around my background strawberry primarily focusing on the edges to increase that sense of form. With my line art complete, I can go in and start to paint my strawberries. So I'm going to start by using a diluted amount of fruit punch, and that's going to be the base value for my strawberries. Any areas that I want to make a soft transition, I'll use some clean water to reactivate that ink. Going in with some undiluted fruit punch for areas of a darker value. For areas of shadow, I'm going to take a small amount of that blue raspberry and mix it with our fruit punch color. This will give us kind of a middle ground that's not too purple, but also not too red. And while our shadow color is still fairly wet, I'll go back in with that fruit punch and blend out that color. This will help to create a sense of three-dimensional form. Once you get beyond that first base layer of color, I always suggest that you paint as if the object is already three-dimensional. So as I work on that gradient for the strawberry, I'm really trying to think about the three-dimensional form it is instead of just filling in flat color. Now for my stems, I'll mix the green using our lemon drop and blue raspberry, focusing mostly on that yellow as it'll give us a nice spring green. And then for the shadow areas on my stem, I'm going to take that same green and add a little bit of blue raspberry and a little bit of our fog color and that'll give us a darker shadow value. Now once these initial layers are fully dry, we can go in with our white gel pen and really start to have some fun. Now thanks to the reactive qualities of our Hero Arts ink, that white gel pen will not only reactivate our colors, but it's also going to kind of blend in and create a lighter value. So here you can see as that white gel pen sits on that ink, it goes from being a true white to more of a pink. Now just like with our galaxy piece, we can always build up those whites for a nice strong contrast. And I'm also going to go in with our Copic Multiliner and add a few more details and shadow seeds to our strawberry. Once again, keeping that texture on the outside to really push that three-dimensional form. Now if you ever feel like you went overboard with your white gel pen, you can always go back over it with the reactive ink and it'll tamper down that white. And with that, our video is complete. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxJune. We love seeing what y'all create each month. And if you want to check out any of our previous videos, head over to our YouTube channel where you can like and subscribe. And I'll see you next month.